I'm glad you're all here tonight. I'm glad you're here early in the season. We know what happened last year. We don't know if it's going to happen this year. There's probably three scenarios. It's going to be less, it's going to be the same, it's going to be more. We don't know, but we want to be prepared. And we're talking about the aquatic plants, of course. I'm going to address two questions that seem to be the main thrust of Monday night's meeting. I wasn't there, but I understand this was uh, these two questions were, were kind of the, the main questions that came out of the meeting. And one of them was, um, why isn't the DNR Corps of Engineers being held accountable for the plan on the water level? And we're going to use a chart that I believe someone passed around on uh, on the last meeting. You got a laser pointer? Okay. So briefly, um, this is a pretty good chart that's obviously obviously been put together by uh, some of the data off the Corps of Engineers website. I can tell you that the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers controls the water level on Lake Winnebago. Actually, the Lake Winnebago pool is impacted by the two dams at Nina Menasha. The Nina Dam is privately owned. The, fed, um, the Menasha Dam is federally owned. The Corps has been involved in this role since 1872. Department of Natural Resources has input, as do, does anyone else that uses the system, the pool, or has an interest in it. So, we look at Lake Winnebago, but we also have to look at the Upper River Lakes, Petermore, Winnie County, and Poygan. The maximum backup effect of those two dams at Nina Menasha is about uh, at Fremont on the Wolf River and Eureka on the Fox River. So that whole area from there down here to down here is impacted by those dams. They operate off a plan that was jointly developed in the, during the 1970s called the Lindy Plan. Lindy was a person, Arlen Lindy. I worked for him, started about 30 years ago and I worked for Arlen Lindy. That was the first stab and, and by DNR at getting the Corps of Engineers to look at environmental concerns and water level management. Prior to that, they really hadn't addressed that. So, some of these things on this chart, this is the Lindy Plan target across the, um, the summer period during essentially the navigation season which is in this bracket and these numbers down here are days of the year I believe and these are um, these numbers are kind of confusing but they aren't depth or anything what they are they're they're markings on the gauge at Oshkosh and they cor they correlate with uh, the crest the Menasha Dam so in other words right here is the crest of Menasha Dam would be 1.68 feet this is the summer level up here this number three that's actually like almost 16 inches above the crest of the Manasha Dam. So that's what those numbers mean, and these are in half foot increments. Now, this is basically the navigation season, which is also kind of the growing season. And I think the concern, if I'm not mistaken, and please pipe up if, if I'm going down the wrong track here, but I think the concern was, if you look at this line right here, there is a date, 2007 through 2010, that's kind of lower than these other dates that were one the blue one is 80, 80 through 83 and the green one is oh, uh, 94 through 97. That's a little bit confusing but the Lindy plan was implemented by the Corps of Engineers in about 1981. The summer target level of about three feet on the Oshkosh gauge which means about 15 point inches above the crest of the Menasha Dam it's been the same every summer since then. That doesn't mean you get that water every summer. It's been as low as down here, about 2.1 feet in the drought of 1988, and it's been as high as 3.8 feet in uh, the high water of 1993. So over that period from 1981, it has actually fluctuated by as much as over that period as, as a foot and a half. But suffice to say, if it goes up, Above this red line, the Corps of Engineers tries to drive it downward. If it's below, they try to drive it upward. This is ice out right about here, and the Corps of Engineers tries to refill the Winnebago pool about as soon as the ice goes out. They've done, they used to do that right away. Now they do it a little bit more gradually, hence this line is a little bit lower. But in reality, that difference is about less than three weeks where they, where they, have, where they try to hit that target. You can see they hit it right here in about day 120. That must be early, and end of April or early May. And later on, they hit it in this red line 
later on in May. So that's not a big deal, nor is this difference here between here and here, this high point right here and this low point. We're talking 3.2 minus 2.7, we're talking a half a foot of water in about three weeks' time. And let me tell you people, this is not significant. And the reason this, this, this more gradual rise is in there in the first place is we have to consider all this whole pool, not just Lake Winnebago. And we see when that rise is really rapid, particularly on the upper river lakes, Butamore, Winnicott, and Poygan, it's very detrimental to the wetlands up there. And also, this builds in a little bit more buffering capacity from when the snow melt is gone, the water is still coming up, and if we get some excessive rains, we go way off the charts, and that causes more environmental damage, particularly on that upper river lakes. We've had flooding in 2004, and I believe it was in 2008, 1993, and that has some negative economic impacts with that flooding. So, we're looking at a little bit of difference here, a range of about a half a foot overall, a little bit of difference between hitting the target by maybe about early May versus late May. The Corps of Engineers always tries to get to the summer level by Memorial Day. They, they, they shoot for that summer target during the navigation season. They shoot for that by June 1st. In reality, it's just about Memorial Day. Did I say Labor Day or Memorial Day? Memorial Day. Okay, good. I'm still, I'm still with it a little bit. Um, so, what I'm trying to get at, and I don't want to dwell on this, is we're going up, we're barking up the wrong tree if we're looking at water level management because these plants <coughs> we're talking about are not depth limited on Lake Winnebago. We're talking maybe a little bit, a half a foot difference right here. We're talking about plants that under ideal conditions, some of them like wild celery, will grow as deep as 25 feet of water. We're talking about plants we see on Lake Winnebago, native aquatic plants, that are growing in 11, 12, 13 feet of water. This is, oops, I missed it. This is, um, now what I do. Uh, I'm dangerous with that. Right. It's not, going forward. yeah, going forward. Simply put, water level isn't the issue. The depth is not limiting for these aquatic plants. They're, what's limiting out there is water clarity. And we had excellent water clarity last year. Certainly nutrients are not limiting out there on this lake either. There's more than abundant nutrients. I should probably rub some of that lake water on my head, in fact. But um, water, water depth is not a problem. I don't know if we can, we can address questions later on. Is that what we're going to do, Diane? Okay. So I think I've covered that for now. I, I think I see some nodding. Yeah, I think I understand this thing going on here. So we can always come back and revisit it. But if we go down this route, it's just, it's just the wrong way to go with dealing with these plants. 